due to my very bad sore throat. But anyway, we've enjoyed the stream. Um, if anyone wants to make a last, oh. <coughs> please do so, brothers. I will give CM a chance. CM, you haven't said much today. What, have you, what would you like to say? I've been watching some of your videos, um, which you've been dissecting the Trinity. So keep that up, my friend. That's really oh. good stuff you're, you're, you're posting. Yeah, I appreciate it. I was just gonna, you know, when I was making the case, my my opinion uh, when I do when we're talking about the Comforter, you know, um, I, I I just believe it's the um, you know Christ is referred to as the Advocate, the the um, Helper, right, the the one, and so you know He tells you that the the Father and I will come and we will make our dwelling within you, the Father and I. So I see it when He says He will send another. Jesus speaks Iliism, right? He's speaking a lot. He he speaks a lot of time in third person. So. You know, he says, I, I have to go away. Otherwise, the comforter cannot come. I have to go away because it tells you that if he did not go away, he would not be glorified. And the spirit was not yet to be given because Jesus had not yet been glorified. So he goes away. And then the new comfort, that's why he says that he will not speak of his own authority. Well, that's exactly what Christ said when he was on earth in physical form. Uh, you know, he, he's echoing exactly the same thing that he did in physical form. But now it's going to be him in spiritual form. That's, that's what the gospel teaches. I, I know Muslims disagree with this, but when you look at the gospel, it says that Christ will, will remain you and, and the father and I will come and we will make our dwelling within you. So I think, the, 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 so I think the, yeah. um, what Christ was trying to get at was I have to go away otherwise. And it says, I will be with you forever. Even till the end of the age, the comforter will be with you ever forever. See? So that's what I believe. That's why I respect what you've got to say. However, when you make mention, and it measures in the Quran that the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, does not speak of himself, but he, oh, thank you for that advice, Amar. Really appreciate it. Um, yeah. So, um, yeah, I mean, in the Quran, Allah says about the Prophet Muhammad, upon whom be peace, that he does not speak of his own volition, but that which is revealed to him. So you can understand where we're coming from in regards sure. to that. I think Nizam has made a tremendous... I've listened to Nizam's explanations before in regards to the comforter, and the various trends that we've got within there, which we could discuss some other time. But I find it very compelling. And I'm not just doing that with my Muslim glasses on. It's yeah. rather, it's quite a substantive. And he's made make an excellent conclusion based upon those. Are they the German scholars, Nazam, you made reference to? Uh, yes, it's people like Rudolf Boltman, uh, Windisch, Stas, uh, Benz, and uh, another person, I believe. But yeah, it's, it's those German scholars. And... Um, th there are also like a few scholars here and there as well, like not, who are not German, but yeah. Well, if okay, you look so at like John fourteen sixteen, it says also in John fourteen eighteen, I will not leave his orphans. I will come to you, me, I. See, so that's you know when I look at it, when it says the Spirit, I will be with you forever, even till the end of the age. And the Comforter, he says, I will be with you. I will come to you. And it says the father and the son. So the way I see it, I think people are missing the boat as far as Trinitarians are, is Jesus is speaking about himself in third person. He's going to, you know, because the spirit is the spirit of the father, but he tells you that the, a new comforter will come. Well, because we're told that Christ will go from a physical comforter walking with them into a spiritual comfort that's going to be dwelling inside believers permanently forever through the power of the Holy Spirit of the Father. So it is, It is. Mm -hmm. he will not speak of his own authority. He will remind you of all the things that I've told you because it's. he's echoing exactly what he said on earth, physical form, but he's going to spiritual form. Excellent. Yeah, so, Excellent. Go, straight, go ahead. Uh, well, I was just going to say Raymond Brown, um, in his two-volume commentary to John's Gospel, um, mm -hmm. he takes the same interpretation that you do, mm -hmm. uh, which is that John understood the paraclete to be Jesus coming in his second coming but mm. in, in a di different form. I would see it as before the second coming. I would see it as because okay. it says it would, yeah, because it would be kind of weird as it would be expedient that I go away. Otherwise the comforter <laughs> cannot come. Well, 2000 years later, he hasn't come yet. So I think that he's, he has to go away. And then it says the spirit to them was not yet given because Christ had not yet been glorified. When Christ was glorified, then the spirit was given to them. Right. Mm -hmm. So, that's how I read it. I know Muslims disagree with it, but I think it matches perfectly with the, the whole point of he will not speak of his own authority. Well, that's exactly what Christ said physically. Uh, he will say everything I've, uh, I've told you. Well, he's going to be doing the exact same thing spiritually now in believers rather than physically there with believers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so um, like, 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 generally, like, like Muslims 
well, well, I'll just speak for myself. Like, uh, like generally, I agree with you. Like in its present state, John's gospel uh, does seem to say says that. So I think that Raymond Brown and yourself are like correct. Mm. Um, but but we're just coming at like also like from a historical point of view because um, in early Christianity, like in the second and like the fourth century. Uh, there were like early heretical groups or so-called heretical groups uh, who interpret the paraclete saints to refer to some kind of prophet or some mm-hmm. male salvific figure to come after Jesus, such right. as um, Matanus. Um, and even some Syriac Christians as well also believed the paraclete to be a prophet as well. So how would you make it? How would you guys make it then when it says, I will come to you and it says the father and I will come and we will come and make our dwelling within you. When when Christ says, I will come and I will be with you and the Father and I will come, how does that yeah. work into your belief? Yeah, so th- is that from John's Gospel, I take it? Yeah, it's it's the Father and I will come and we will make our dwelling within you. Uh, that's John. Okay. That's John. Uh, let's see here. It says, the, it says the Spirit will reside in you. And it says, I come to you in John 14, 18. And then it says... Um, where does it say this, the Father and I will come and we will make our dwelling in you? Oh, John 14, 23. The Father will love him and mm. we will come to him and dwell within him. Uh, yes, yeah, so um, Muslims would understand that to be referring to John like in its present state. Uh, so chapter 14, we regard that as being like a, le- a later stage of saying or Jesus is saying about the paraclete so like our view tends to be that the paraclete sayings have been redacted and reshaped so as they've been stylistic to refer to like either Jesus coming um in in another state um like in the form of the holy spirit hmm. how would it, how would you guys see it as uh, um when it says um that he is going to, you know, it would be expedient that he would come back to them. So, um, and, and he would be with them forever. I will be with you forever, even till the end of the age. How would you guys deal with that as far as the one coming back? Jesus really seems to indicate that it's going to be him in spiritual form, like spiritually. Yeah, so those generally, those particular passages that come from chapter 14 mm-hmm. rather than from chapter 16, so mm. chapter 16 generally tends to be read as mm. referring to a human figure, mm. whereas chapter 14 is generally re- read to refer to the Holy Spirit. Mm-hmm. But, but, it's, but when it says the Father and I will come and we will come, it seems to yeah. indicate that that would be Jesus. The way I read yeah, it. I, I agree. Think, yeah. yeah, no, no, I agree. And, and that's from chapter 14. Yeah, yeah. I'd have to look uh, at chapter 16 a little bit more. But what I see it as we have an advocate, at least the way I read the Bible. I know Muslims disagree with that. But when it says we have with, an advocate, what's that? Well, I'll just go, my final point was in chapter 16, uh, mm. Jesus says, I have many more things to say to you, uh, mm. but you cannot bear them now. How be it when he, the spirit of truth, will come, mm-hmm. um, he will guide you to all truth. So that seems to be that Jesus like, like at face value, at face as value, it doesn't sound like Jesus is speaking about himself in the third person. It more sounds like Jesus is speaking about another person to come after him. Well, we, we know that Jesus is called the I am the way, the truth, and the life, and he's made a life-giving spirit. Um, and says, that's in chapter 14 or, uh, rather than in well, chapter 16. Right. Look, let's see. Let me look at 16. This is uh, in, you said in chapter 16? Yeah, verse 12 and 13. I have to look a little bit deeper into ch- chapter 16. But it says, uh, when the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you to all truth, for he will not speak of his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will declare all these things that are to come. He will glorify me, for he will take what is mine, and I declare it to you. All that the Father has in yeah. mind. Yeah, so I think that some translations, though, are not he. I think it's, um, they kind of add that. They play around with the words. I think in the Texas Receptus, um, mm-hmm. I think the the, the, um, the pronouns are neuter gender, uh, but I think in the other, like the Kurt Allen uh, Greek text, mm-hmm. um, it, it's masculine rather than neuter gender. 
Whereas in chapter 14, uh, the pronouns are new to gender. So they can mm-hmm. refer to the Holy Spirit. But in chapter 16, they seem to be speaking about a male figure because they're masculine. So like and the pronouns was- are different to chapter 14. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's it seems to me like um, it's echoing, you know, because it matches perfectly with he will not speak of his own authority, which Jesus says, I have spoken not of my own authority. Um, yep. It says, and, and he goes, I am going to the Father, especially when it says, that the spirit to them was not yet given because Christ had not yet been glorified. See, to me, that I have to go away, otherwise the spirit mm. cannot come. To me, it means that he's been glorified, and at this point, he, he can remain with them because he says, I, w- I will be with you forever. A little while, you are no longer going to see me, and again, mm-hmm. then a little while, and you will see me. And they're saying, how are, you, how are we going to see you? Uh, I think it's the yeah. way I read it would be that uh, apart be... from John chapter 16, verse seven, mm. uh, the rest of the passages you quoted are all from chapter 14. So chapter reading... 16, verse seven. I was says... reading from 16. Okay. Cause, cause 16 says, I will go away. If mm. I do not go, he will not come to you. Mm-hmm. But if I go, I will send him. Uh, whereas in chapter 14 are the other sayings like, um, Dwelly, or you know him, but you don't see him. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know him because he's in you, or she'll be in you, and so on. Uh, those are like from John chapter 14, verse 17. Right. And the 16 um, says, A little while, and you are not going to see me. And after a little while, you will see me. Uh, and it mm-hmm. says, How are we going to see you? This is in 16, um, verse 16 here, I think. And then it says, I speak to you in figures of speech. And then it says um, that I come forth from the Father, I'm coming to the world, I'm going to the world. Um, but yeah, I mean, the way I would see it is, like I said, I don't, I don't agree with the Trinitarian view. Too, oh, but, for yeah, me, yeah. but for me, I think it's, the, because we're told that the, in John 14 that the Father and the Son will be coming. So I see that as Christ is the one who's going to be being there forever with them. Uh, but spiritually rather than physically. And it's through the power of the spirit of God, the father that was dwelling uh, with the disciples. Yeah. I, I, and I, I agree with you with regards to chapter 14. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but not, just but for not chapter 16. 16. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Not, not 16 because on, on at chapter 16, at least um, like on a surface level, like mm-hmm. the obvious or the apparent meaning seems to be someone else other than Jesus. Mm-hmm. Well, when I, Jesus does yeah. speak a lot, like he, he will speak a lot in third person, like you will see the son of man and you will see him. But it's actually he's mm-hmm. referring to himself. He doesn't say you will see me. So I, a lot of times he speaks in Iliism where he'll say you will see him and he will come. But it's actually that would seem like you would be talking about somebody else. But it's actually him in third person. Well, even in some of the son of man sayings, um, it, sometimes Jesus speaks about himself in the third person. But in mm-hmm. some of them, um, he seems to be speaking about another to come after him. Mm-hmm. Like he says, whoever rejects me, uh, so shall the son of man when he comes. Mm-hmm. Rege- uh, like, so shall the son of man reject them when, when he comes. So that sounds like, uh, at least on the surface level, he seems to be speaking about another future son of man. Mm-hmm. What do you, so what do you think about that question, man? Well, I would see, like I said, it to me, when it says in John 14, like Nizam agrees with, I would see that as when Jesus says, the Father and I will come and we will dwell within you. To me, I would have to harmonize with with John 16. And I would see that as like, if you look at like himself as a third person, uh, when he says things like um, another comforter, he says, I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. Right, Matt? Like, and it says... Uh, even until the end of the world in John 14, 18 and Matthew 28, 20. And it says, and, and he says the spirit of Christ that lives in us, the spirit of the father and the son. So to me, I think when I would take away with this is that, that it would be that the, the Alon, the Parkleton, another of the same kind, Christ is being transformed from a physical one that's going to be there. He's presently there with them physically. And now he's a spiritual comforter able to, communicate to us uh through the power of the spirit of the father that's how i would read it but um mm. he does speak in third person a lot like like he says like the 
the yeah, son I agree. of man. Yeah. yeah. And then if you see where he talks about the first person and third person, he kind of switches it back and forth um, a lot. Yeah, he does that like in Matthew. <laughs> if you compare the same yeah, thing. Like, like, yeah. yeah, it's kind of like... And I think yeah. Luke as well. And Luke, like it says, I and I, first person, will pray to the Father, and he shall give you another comforter. He, third person, mm -hmm. may abide with you forever, even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive because it sees him, third person, not mm -hmm. neither knows him, third person, but you know him, third person, for he, third person, dwells with you and shall be in you. I, third person, will not leave you comfortless. I, first person, mm -hmm. will come to you. Yet a little while and the world will see me first person no more but you see me first person because i first person live you shall live also and that day you shall know that i first person am in the father and ye and me first person and i and you so i think that he switches from first to third a lot on that but you know that the third person pronouns those are new to gender mm -hmm, yeah rather than masculine yeah but yeah so so are you saying that me when he says that that's first person are you saying the he, it kind of uh, like the, it? The, the first person that does refer to Jesus is referring mm -hmm. to a person, mm -hmm. but the third person in chapter fourteen are like grammatically neuter gender, mm -hmm. so it's more like an it, just right. like um, in the synoptic gospels, mm -hmm. the Holy Spirit's referred to as an it rather right. than as a he. I would have no uh, problem with that because the way I would read it is it's not Jesus yet because Christ hasn't been changed into a spiritual form, so. You know, when he mm -hmm. speaks figuratively, I would see that as, you know, he, he it is speaking about something that's other than himself because he's going from his body into a completely different transformation into a spiritual form. And I, I don't think he even, I mean, he doesn't know what really what he's going to become, I don't think. But I would see this as, this is how I, how I demonstrate this to Trinitarians is when it tells you the Father and the Son are coming, it doesn't allude to any third person of the Trinity, right? So... Mm. But Jesus is referred to as a he, um, right. even after his resurrection. Mm -hmm. um, so like Paul, for example, in his letters refers to Jesus as a he, mm -hmm. like as a spirit, um, the spirit of the Lord. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, but, but uh, my view is chapter 14, mm -hmm. uh, the paraclete there refers to the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. But in chapter 16, there it re refers to a human prophet. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah i would see that it includes kind of both of them because when when jesus is talking he's always including the father because the father is a vehicle that allows christ to be present in believers so when he's speaking about the spirit he's not excluding the father because the way that christ is able to be in believers and dwelling spiritually with people is through the spirit of the father so <clears throat> it's kind <throat> of like they're they're one like like he says the father and i yeah. will come and we will dwell within you so when he's speaking well, about himself I, spiritually he's also including the father yeah well, well i would agree with you with regards to chapter 14 yeah so, so 16 you yeah. see it kind of a chapter 16 you kind of see it as a as a uh, as a different a separate yeah mm -hmm. a, a separate mm -hmm. saying of the paraclete to chapter mm -hmm. 14 mm -hmm. okay well, thanks, gentlemen, for having me on. Oh, I, thank I, you. I appreciate yeah. you guys. Uh, Very dialoguing. interesting. Yeah, I, 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 uh, I really appreciate your show. You know, I think the, I think a great show, and I've mentioned it to Nizam and others, um, and it's certainly something to think about. Is I think the Trinity dialogue would be a fantastic subject. My, per, me personally, and the the subject matter would be: Is the Trinity something that's taught in the gospel? Like you know, taught. So this is where Trinitarians are not going to be able to come up when is jesus god we'll, we'll have to go to the scriptures to see if is the trinity biblical and then we can get into whether it was taught in the gospel who's trying to make the case for this doctrine and i think that would be a fantastic um forum because they they're gonna have to come up and they're gonna have to show you evidence in the gospel where somebody is trying to make the case that god is a trying being right not yeah, not going point. to not go to all these I am and first and the last, and he's the Alpha and Omega. Mm -hmm. They're going to have to go to the gospel and show you somebody in the scriptures mm -hmm. that are trying to make the case that, hey, God.